Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, and I thought I'd make kind of a random throwback video. So when I first started modding uh, game systems and whatnot, I needed a way of testing them. So um, obviously I could have used a full-size TV, but it was kind of annoying since my room is upstairs. I generally don't have a TV in my room. There's just not enough space to have a decent-sized TV in here and no shelf space to put it anyway. So I got one of these little car monitors and this one uh, had a special wiring harness that was made to be like hardwired into a car. Um, so it had a weird freaky connector on there and some kind of DIN connector. So I chopped that off and rewired it. And um, so this was sort of my most recent monitor that I've made. I've drilled some holes uh, to put RCA jacks and I put a, this originally had no audio, but I put a, um, it was like a little iPod speaker with digital volume control. I cut up the board, I uh, put it inside, soldered everything, put two speakers. And so I, I use this for the longest time for a uh, testing video uh, within the past few recent years. And you might notice this guy from the uh, portable SNES video series that I've done a very long time ago that I've never got to finish, but just wanted to show you kind of how this works. So this takes obviously RCA only, uh, so composite video, but yeah, you can see everything works. And um, yeah, so this is kind of what I used uh, recently. This does 69 or 43. But when I when I started my very first uh, modding attempts, I actually had something even cringier, I guess you could say, than this. This obviously isn't great. It's composite, but it does a job for like NES and SNES debugging and board cutting and that kind of stuff. So let's just unplug this guy. And everything that I make pretty much just runs off standard 12-volt uh, DC barrel jack. And I will show you what I got. <laughs> so this was my first monitor that I ever made. And look how cringy that is. Um, this actually came from a Xbox. Um, it was like one of those portable 5.6-inch Xbox screens. And I took the hinge from it as well. I just kind of drilled into plastic and I cut this part off of it as well to make the stand. So pretty much everything was recycled from that player, including all the plastics. And uh, the case itself is obviously from Radio Shack because, you know, what else would you get uh, random plastic cases in the late 90s from? Anyway, so uh, basically audio video the same as before. Just plug these guys in. Anyway... I just want to show you guys just how bad this is, if this still works. I haven't actually powered this up in something like probably over 15 years. <laughs> so let's just see if it works at all. Ah, yeah. So it does power on. Um, brightness and colors seem to be kind of messed up. This monitor, I remember, was never really good in terms of like viewing angle this is an older type of lcd um let me get you a zoom in on this give me a sec okay so there we go we're zoomed in and let me just you know, get into the menu yeah volume works there's actually interestingly enough two headphone jacks on that and you could see already the color is like washed out and absolutely horrible it actually it looks about right on my uh my camera screen uh, equivalent to what it actually looks like in real life it is absolutely horrible i can't believe that i ever use this for extended periods of time for testing there is a brightness knob but it doesn't really do much uh there's color as well you can view it in black and white if you ever wanted to i don't know why there's bass treble for the volume let's see if you ever wanted to adjust it for some odd reason Anyway, that's uh, basically that. I can just, you know, start something here. It doesn't matter what. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do today, I've rambled on for long enough, is actually tear this open and see what my work was like, you know, when I was a kid. <laughs> Which I can't remember what I did to actually make this, so I'm expecting a lot of hot glue, and it's probably going to be very, very cringy. So anyway, let's turn this off. And what's weird is there are two power switch locations. I think it's not labeled, but I think the first one is for audio only if you want to use this as a speaker. And then the second one's video, possibly. So anyway, let's uh, get this set up for a teardown. I'll show you guys how cringy my work was when I first started modding. Okay, so here's the giant lug of plastic itself. 
I don't think actually I needed this entire space for everything. I just made it overly large just because I could basically. <laughs> so we're going to take out the four screws in the corners. I thought this would be a humbling experience since it's been a while since I've done this and I always get comments like, you know, how do you learn how to uh, make electronics and whatnot? So I guess I'll give you guys a bit of a show of what exactly my start was, which is pretty much taking everything apart and breaking things and putting them together horribly into a Frankenstein of a device. But this actually served me pretty well because uh, it allowed me to at least start testing broken consoles and stuff like that and fixing things that had video outputs uh, without having to tie up the TV, which usually my dad or my mom was using. Anyway, you could see the wiring side. Actually, not as bad as I thought it would have been. Not great, and I definitely liked uh, electrical tape, I guess, a lot. I'm not seeing any hot glue, though, which is definitely a good... Oh, nope. Spoke too soon. Hot glue is holding the uh, DC jack in there, which is just glued in. <laughs> I just uh, dripped some hot snot all the way in there so that... You know, it'll hold the jack in for you. Uh, if you pushed hard enough, that would probably pop off, but I was always careful, I guess. Uh, the video, I'm surprised I actually used a shielded cable for the video wires. Not like it matters because the interference on this screen to begin with is horrible. So I don't know why I took the care to actually use nice wiring and whatnot. Um, yeah, interestingly enough... Okay, I see. So this is the video cable, and this is the audio, and apparently they go to two separate places. And unfortunately... Ah, actually I can. So I made it so that you could unscrew the, uh, the AV jack, which I think I pulled from a VCR. But we are just going to kind of set it aside and unplug the wires. Because luckily the um, thing that I took this from, the Xbox uh, screen had lots of cables and whatnot so you can easily unplug things. Now I remember this screen was actually, it's a complete module, it's a Sharp LM6Q401 and this has a CCFL backlight as evidenced by me putting tape over that part because I probably got shocked accidentally uh, while I was tinkering with this guy so I learned from that and um, I believe uh, this is the, comp or no wait, let me think. What is this guy doing? Why do I have a random wire tape there? I have a feeling that's like brightness or contrast or something. I needed a random extra wire to go in. I don't know why, but that's that. I believe uh, these are the actual video wires coming from. There's a converter board which will take S video and composite, and I believe it converts it to some sort of RGB. Uh, which would make sense because I see kind of three potentiometers for adjusting the uh, brightness of each of the RGB channels. And despite that, I... So the main failing of this display, I think, is actually that the LCD technology is really old. It's a... Um, I think it's a CSTN or something like that, twisted, super twisted pneumatic. So it's much, much worse. And, you know, definitely TFT is much better than this, uh, which came along after this came out, as well as um, IPS screens now just blow it away. So anyway, yeah, apparently uh, when I was designing stuff, I didn't think far enough ahead. And when I, I bet you when I assembled this, I found that this cap wouldn't, fit upright because it interfered with this corner of the screen so I had to actually solder wires and I once again hot glued it to the side here <laughs> which is really really cringy um, and I didn't even bother using heat shrink or anything uh, but fair enough <laughs> the audio um, I do have them screwed in actually I did uh, tap you know drill screw holes and tap them and I I remember doing this actually I think I uh I mark this by hand and I just try to drill it straight as I could and I didn't do horribly but you can definitely see this is uh, unique it's not uniform <laughs> so anyway beyond that I have I think I use the original mounting brackets uh, for the LCD to keep everything in as well as um, this kind of piece of plastic that was the, originally the bezel and I just kind of you know screwed that in to hide the fact that there's big gaping hand cut holes uh, because I used a hacksaw to cut out all the holes. And then finally, this, I had done the same thing, just two screws holding it in the side there. And I took the plastics, obviously, from the original unit 
Yeah, you can see this board here is basically the controls and audio amp is right here. Um, I believe I had to also bend this heat sink over like it is right now um, because it was in the way. Uh, so yeah, other than that, uh, this board, as I said, is the video converter board, which pretty much does all the magic. And yeah, um, pretty interesting. To be fair, though, this was kind of a piece of crap to begin with, the uh, original circuit. Uh, because, I mean, look at this. This is a 5-volt regulator, and they, like, use hot glue to, to stick it down. Who does that? Okay, anyway, I just wanted to get that out of my system. So I wasn't impervious to the hot glue phase. I did have my hot glue phase where I used it for everything. Um, but apparently I liked electrical tape a little bit more. I think at one point I had these two strips to kind of tape these wires down, but I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm happy that this still works, actually. That's pretty interesting, um, even though it is very outdated and I have much better monitors and screens and whatnot to use nowadays. Uh, well, notwithstanding, everything uses HDMI nowadays. I mean, when I built this, I thought this would pretty much just be, you know, everything's going to use composite forever. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there is to this. I just wanted to do a quick video showcasing how crap my work was <laughs> um, back in the day when I was a kid learning electronics, and that is that. Another random little tidbit is I've actually worked on this a little more. This is um, the clear DVD drive. Uh, this is actually a DVD burner, and I uh, finally put a button on the front, put a bezel, and let me just grab a disc. And I 3D printed a ring because I've noticed some discs, it has trouble um, latching to the actual spindle um, and it'll miss. So I kind of use this in order to apply some pressure so that it can uh, properly mate with the spindle head. You can see it just goes in there. And this looks really cool while it's reading a DVD because it uses a red laser. So you can actually see the dot reading the data. Uh, although... Probably not the safest thing. Uh, once it gets towards the edge, you could potentially look into the laser, which is pretty bad. This is actually a CD that I'm running it right now, obviously. So it's an infrared laser, so you're not going to see any dot or anything like that. But yeah, you can see everything works. I'm just kind of going to leave that as it is right now. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys a random video because I haven't made one for a while and I've been on vacation. And I have lots of editing of lots of footage to do. So anyway, hopefully you guys liked the video. Hopefully you didn't mind me rambling too much. If you have any questions, uh, comment down below. How did you guys get started uh, modding electronics? Did you guys build any of like test equipment like this um, using scraps and Radio Shack and cardboard and hot glue? Uh, put your stories down below. I'd be interested to uh, get a conversation going, um, see you know similarities to how I grew up with electronics and whatnot. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video, and bye.